course. I'm Anna Sirius. We were bored one summer with nothing to do. We were sitting around the shack and got this brilliant idea to have this show and start out with Annie Mame and look what happened. It lost its head. Fun time for everybody. Thank you. My name is Bernie Snyder. Years you worked here. I don't know. All of them practically. A lot of them. Favorite shows. The only reason I came down here was because I was in love with John Wekester and this was the only place that I could meet him without people talking. <laughs> Seven year in. Thank you. Uh, which I love doing. And, Thank you. And oh gosh, a whole lot of Thank you. I think it's Come on, Vern. Thank you, Vern. Bye. Thank you. Hi. Give us your name. I'm Ann Sander Little from Worcester. Oh, yeah. I was in Labor to Jane, I guess, in 1964, although the year unfortunately isn't on the program. Oh. And what I remember most, is, most besides having a lot of fun and meeting a lot of nice people is during dress rehearsal when my poor grandmother was watching, we were doing the Charleston and I took one step back too far and I fell through it. <gasps> <laughs> and I was a real mess. Oh boy. But I went on the show and uh, I healed very nicely. <laughs> and I was here in 1962. I have so many great memories of this, it's hard to choose one. I remember painting a floor red and taking off after someone who was taunting me. Oh, and I suddenly I slipped on the floor and ended up red from head to toe. That's typical. I remember hearing about Marilyn Monroe's death and we all sat around and mourned her and talked about what was so wonderful about Marilyn Monroe <laughs> and why she was a star. I remember stealing Don Curie's car one night when the guys were stealing our underwear. We had neutral and pushed it down to the fairground, and Don came in living a short while later. I wonder why. Just say I'm Jane Shadburn, mother of Julie and Carolyn and Dan, who lived down here during their teenage years, and this was home. And you, what did you do for us? I was in Carousel, I think, is what we remember. Plus a few dramatic things whose titles have just disappeared. Something with a witch. <laughs> and, uh, Oklahoma. And, uh, Oklahoma, and the whole thing was, was just great. Thank you, Jane. So, thank you, Annie. I'm, I was Sandy Weaver at Arena Fair in 1965 and 1966. And in 1965, I played um, Chastity, which was appropriate for And I also cooked for two weeks. You sure did. I took over for Susie Nickel cooking. And then I came back the following summer and was musical director. But my first job, and probably the most important thing I did, was to help Bill White build the stage. And, um, oh, Bill Whitman, that was what I enjoyed most about Oklahoma. He, Bill Whitman was playing Judd, and he didn't want to sing Lonely Room. And he kept telling me that it was taken out of every production of Oklahoma he had ever seen. And I persuaded him to sing it, and I thought he did a wonderful job. Yes, he did. did. Yes, he did. And then was he, B. Whaley, Liz Whaley, and I produced Rogers and Hart Night in the middle of the summer, and we had everybody we could think of on stage, uh, usually all at the same time, jumping around. Liz had them dancing, and I had them singing. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we ended the season with uh, Little Mary Sunshine, and Jenny Hayfleet was marvelous because she wanted to do the whole thing on tow. What? So she did a lot of it on tow. Wonderful. Dr. Gore! Um, I never know what to say on these occasions. Well, we remember you vividly from the mousetrap. What else did you participate in? That's all. That was enough. You were scraping the barrel. No, we weren't. You were great. But I was sent up for a pre-induction physical in 45, and uh, I was mentioning this to a young and rather short student we had when I c came to do my work at Worcester. And he said, I said, they were scraping the barrel and they found me. And he said, they looked under the barrel and there they found me. <laughs> what a great story. Bill's okay. Pamela Gore, okay. It's uh, 1961, 62, 63 summers in the first two. I was an apprentice, which was very exciting. 
much fun for a high school student to be accepted by college students. It was like being a sort of instant adult. Yep. And uh, in the third year, to become a member of the company and be property's mistress was particularly gratifying. And Arena Fair, to me, was an opportunity to take responsibility for things and to learn about self-respect and oh, wonderful experience. Philip Gore, an apprentice in 68, and had a small part in an early play near the beginning of the Arena Fair as a newsboy. Yes, extra, were you? Extra, extra. I don't know what show it was, though. Was it Our Town? No. Might, might have been, or Bus Stop? Yes. One of those. Uh, it really caught fire uh, to my interest in theater to be involved with. Have you continued that in any way? Uh, off and on. Good. Including uh, this past year in doing sound for the gin game here in Worcester and also uh, chorus parts in uh, Ten Nights in a Bar Room. Thank you. Thank you, Phyllis. Hi. I thought I would speak with I'm Evelyn Craig, and uh, I I asked Barb if you were the 13 were scared when you started in 1961. <laughs> Tell them what you said. I said, no, we were too dumb to be scared. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> well, I knew you all then, and I admired you then and I admire you now and I think you had lots of spunk to do what you did. Thank you very much. Managerial stuff was divided between two other men and we'd gotten well known enough and had a problem with having a group of actors at the time who wanted to act and a group of tech people who were tech people and there wasn't the camaraderie that there had been in the other years that I'd worked in the theater. That was the problem at the very beginning of the season. Um, right into the first week of the run, we had the biggest flood that's ever hit northeastern Ohio and Wayne County for sure. It devastated the theater. Um, it rained, I don't remember. I don't remember the statistics, but it was a full day and a night and when we we had people out all down all over the fairgrounds sandbagging and trying to fill in dirt because we're in a very low area down here but it really didn't help and when we all came down when we could get through town which was all blocked off when we could get to the theater after the flood there was mud up to the second or third risers on the seats the box office was full of mud um, since the box office was high but it was up to my above my ankle in the box office. I mean, you sunk in up to yeah, your ankles? You, you just walked, it was gook. It was mm -hmm. not even just mud. It was all kinds of awful stuff. The whole fairgrounds was inundated. There were places on the fairgrounds that had seven and eight feet of water in them. Um, the dressing room area and the places where we stored things back in the cow barn were, oh, and if it hadn't been, if it had been on the floor, it was lost. If a lot of it was up over my head, then we saved quite a bit of stuff. But um, we didn't know. We thought right then we couldn't possibly continue the season. There was no way we could get the theater cleaned and ready um, to do anything else. The, the trailer that we kept a lot of the scenery and woods for the sets and that kind of stuff was also in mud. It had covered up part of the trailer, so whatever was on the floor of the trailer was lost. Um, the stage sets we had, oh, half of them probably, I don't really remember if that's true, but it seemed at the time that it was just completely devastating. We didn't have the money and we didn't have the people to go ahead and get the theater cleaned up and to replace what we needed to have replaced. And the whole town was working hard afterwards on cleaning up the town. And while we from the theater were here looking with tears running down our cheeks at what we were going to do, four or five carloads of town people came down and said, we've paid money for next week's, we want to see it, what can we do to help? And they wrote a few things about 
places that had been hurt in the paper for free. We were just one of the touring spots that they saw. So there were some write-ups in the paper about us. And we had firemen helping. We had um, close to probably over the week, a hundred or so people come out with shovels and hoses and all kinds of cleanup equipment so that we all pitched in and we probably lost two weeks uh, of the season. And we finished, we, we got the place cleaned up, people donated wood, they donated costumes. Um, what we needed, we found somehow. They were very kind about noticing from the rest of the shows on through the season that we, that we were missing things. Um, it wasn't, it was one of those things, we've lived through this hardship, let's keep this place, this, this is ours, this community theater is ours, let's keep it going. And I don't think, I don't think the theater itself, the people that worked in the theater themselves, got back um, the feeling of closeness as well as the community did who, who were making us be there, who wanted us very much to be part of the community. And contrary to popular opinion, we did finish the season. We did all seven shows that we had planned to do. And after that, I don't remember what happened at the end. I don't remember who was, decided that we weren't going to have Arena Fair anymore or anything else. Was this the first season where people were, were paid uh, to be here, do you know? Everybody that worked here, I think it was the first season that everybody that worked in the theater was paid. Because um, I worked, the year I was box office manager, I was paid. But, I, but that was a specified position that was part of the staff. Any other time I would just, I would show up and just say, I'm here, I have the summer, what can I do? Because I enjoyed it so much. Um, but this year, all the actresses, all the actors, and all the, all the staff that worked here got paid regardless. I don't know how they did that either. I know we worried that we wouldn't get paid, but I don't remember anybody, I don't remember anybody taking a pay cut. Um, or we, we took it out of the gross or whatever we did. It just seems like the checks came through anyhow, which may have been one of the problems. I don't know. I, I know. So I for all of us, it's special, and I hope that those of you who see this will remember Arena Fair as fondly as we remember you.